month, Spring Hill Library has celebrated its 120th anniversary. Now, here's the news from 1893. Good morning and welcome to Ladywood News on the 9th of January 1893. I'm Elizabeth Rogers. And I'm Albert Brown. Today's top headline. Spring Hill Library is opening today. We'll have a special report. But first. An inquest today was told that a five-year-old girl, Daisy Lord from Aston, died after playing with a lighted candle. Her clothes caught fire and she sustained fatal burns. Daisy sadly died soon after. A report by Her Majesty's Chief Inspector under the Canal Boats Act has issued a report about the number of children travelling or living on canal boats. The figures show that there are 2,599 boats in the city. There are 373 children under school age and 484 of school age. There is one child of school age travelling with every fourth boat. Many parents are anxious that their children should get as much education as possible. Breaking news. A case of smallpox has been discovered in the workhouse on Dodgy Road. A 36-year-old tramp has developed a rash. It is feared the disease may spread as he slept in a room with up to 30 other tramps last night. Now hundreds of people attended ice skating at Edgbaston Reservoir. The water is entirely frozen over and people are skating on it. A band is in attendance tonight. A hawker, Joseph Bate, was summoned after employing his son John, aged 10, after 9pm. PC Harris saw the boy hawking oranges at 11pm in New Street. A fortnight later, he saw the boy again hawking oranges whilst his father was in the public house. His father said he didn't think he was doing anything wrong. He was fined five shillings. Just before midnight yesterday, a fire broke out which assumed somewhat alarming proportions at a bed-making practice factory in Sheepcote Street. A fire engine on the way to the scene met with an accident on the slippery horse road when it skidded and collided with a post. On reaching the fire, two firemen were injured when a wall collapsed and they were knocked to the ground. Later, we'll be at the opening of Spring Hill Library. We have been following the buildings of the library for the last two years. And then we go to the ground floor. Yeah, then we'll go up the steps. And Architects have drawn up the, these great plans and sketches. The fences yeah. might look like that though. The artist told us it was going to look like that. So nice! Special bricks have been designed to make the library look really impressive. These bricks are called terracotta. The huge clock will be a valuable addition to the library, although it took time to get it into the building. And here at the library, they're bringing in the clock. <coughs> Can you talk to us? We don't have any time for that. There will be four clock faces and they will be seen from a distance. The motto of Birmingham is called Forward and we saw this huge crest being made in a factory. It really is an impressive building. The crest above the library entrance was delivered and erected recently. The terracotta forward stone is going to be a great feature of the building. Work is really going well and the gorgeous glass windows are being delivered. I'm the librarian and these are going to look stunning. Here 
here is some glass work and it's stunning and beautiful. And here comes some more. And now the library is ready to open and we take you live to the scene. Thank you, and you join us here in front of invited guests and shortly the Lord Mayor will be arriving. This is a happy day. The demand for free libraries has greatly exceeded supply and this library is a great thing for the town of Birmingham. <laughs> the new building is in easy reach of the inhabitants of the neighbourhood. Everyone is sure that it will go to good use. Ah, and here comes the Lord Mayor and the Lord Mayoress. Thank you for attending. Thank you for inviting us. This is a fine example of architects, Martin and Chamberlain. It was only 30 years ago that the first library was built in Birmingham. Some older people, and I can see some here, may remember that the site of the library was once a turnpike. And this is now this very impressive building. It has 500 pounds worth of books, but until April will mainly be a reading room with the choice of newspapers. <coughs> Since the 1870 Education Act, many millions of people have developed the skills to learn to read. Although, I hope adults do not read the newspapers but are even a betting. I am sure that will not be the case. From April, there'll be plenty of books. I now declare this library open for the use of the public. And that's the news from us. On the day the library opened, goodbye. Brilliant.